Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Simon Voltum, the Director of Sales here with eTechnologies, and I appreciate you all joining the uh, call this afternoon. Um, today, <clears throat> we're going to be speaking um, about Starship and how Starship can uh, integrate with your Macola platform and the efficiencies it can offer versus what you might be used to today with Shipgear. Um, but also joining our call today, um, besides Moses Webb, our sales executive, who will be going through the presentation and demo with you, we also have Scott Mills from Visible Supply Chain, um, who will be taking you through a short presentation regarding the post office and how the post office can be a viable option in your shipping environment and where it can potentially save you some money. Um, before we get started, I'd like to take care of a couple of housekeeping tips. Um, if you do have a question, we are going to keep questions to the end, so we'll leave enough time towards the end of the presentations and the demo um, to be answered. Um, but if you do have a question, please raise your hand um, by your name. You can type in your question in the question box there, um, and we will address as many questions as we can with time permitting. Um, and again, everyone is in mute mode right now, um, and we will field questions towards the end of the call. With that being said, I'm going to turn over the floor to Moses. He's going to kick it off with a presentation on uh, V Technologies and Starship, and uh, we'll uh, go into Scott's presentation here in a few minutes. Moses, the floor is yours. All righty. Thank you, Simon, for the introduction, and greetings, and good afternoon to all. Uh, so as Simon mentioned, today I'm going to take you all through a brief PowerPoint here, um, just to highlight a few Starship uh, highlights here and some key differences with our other shipping, shipping solution, Shipgear. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin this. All right, so again, let's discuss uh, the difference here, uh, migrating from Shipgear to Starship. All right, so what are the key differences between Shipgear and Starship? So in a nutshell, uh, Shipgear is, or Starship is a multi-carrier, multi-mode. Uh, single application. So in other words, Shipgear will be able to, or Starship, excuse me, will be able to process your small parcel, your LTL, your international, and even your EDI orders uh, all in one single porter. So this differs from Shipgear, uh, which only utilizes the individual carrier's interface, um, such as UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager. So Starship has the ability uh, for line item integration, and with that line item integration, Starship will be able to uh, rate shop with over 25 different carriers that we support directly. Uh, we'll be able to print out your international documentation, uh, your, your bill of lading documents, and also some much needed information uh, for your EDI solution as well. Another key difference uh, is the ability to batch process with Starship and even merge related orders, uh, which is not achievable uh, with Shipgear today. So if you notice uh, on this slide here, the last bullet under that Starship uh, column highlights here is our e-commerce extension. Um, so Starship has the ability to integrate directly with e-commerce platforms uh, such as Shopify, WooCommerce, uh, Amazon, Magento, and even eBay, uh, to name a few. And so along with the direct integration with those platforms, uh, you can utilize these e-commerce platforms as an extension uh, to your Starship solution with Macola. So for example, if you flow your e-commerce uh, platform orders through Macola, and with some appropriate mapping, you can uh, pull those orders in from, to Starship, and upon completing that process um, inside of Starship, Starship has the ability to write back to both Macola and also that e-commerce uh, platform as well. So what are some big reasons um, to switch over? Uh, so first and foremost, uh, you will be transitioning over to a more robust ERP system and integration. So Shipgear is our um, entry level middleware application, while Starship, on the other hand, allows you the ability again to have full access to the 25 different uh, LTL integrations and carrier options. Uh, you will receive uh, the post office module out of the box uh, with purchasing Starship. And so this will grant you access to discounted uh, USPS rates, uh, in which Scott here will highlight here in a few minutes uh, some advantages there. And so as I mentioned earlier, Starship has the ability uh, for line item integration. And again, with that line item integration, 
uh, Starship will be able to streamline your small parcel orders, your LTL, international, um, some hazmat if you're doing hazmat shipping as well. Starship also will uh, allow you to rate shop between the different carriers uh, with your uh, negotiated rate uh, inside of Starship. If you're currently uh, processing EDI orders um, or have interest in EDI or even uh, WMS system, uh, Starship is a software that will provide you with a fully automated um, process there and in great integration uh, to that WMS system that you choose or the EDI provider as well. So along with the solution itself, uh, you will be able to take advantage and enhance your company's brand uh, with over with the two different features that uh, we we have included with the Starship license, which is eNotify and Dashboard, uh, which I'll uh, kind of cover uh, at the end of the demo here as well. And that last bullet that you're seeing here, uh, the centralized deployment uh, with support for RDP and Centric. So basically, if uh, your company has multiple locations, uh, Starship will be the best solution for you, uh, your company, and most importantly, your workflow to help uh, integrate all those locations together. So here is just uh, a, a few visual looks of the uh, 25 different carriers that we work with. Um, so here's just a few that we work directly with. And so just to give you a general overview of the EDI integration, um, Starship can generate SSPC codes. Uh, we can provide um, and also print out a GS1-128 labels as well, if needed. And we can also generate the ASN number as well. So below are a few of the EDI solutions that we work in conjunction with. Um, so if you have any EDI questions or um, any interest, please feel free to reach out to myself afterwards, and we can uh, discuss that for you and get those answer uh, and get those questions answered for you. All right, so that concludes uh, the brief PowerPoint here, um, and I am actually before I jump into the demo, I want to turn the presentation over to Scott, who will highlight some of the benefits of the USPS service and how it will help benefit you. So Scott, let me go ahead and transfer you here. Thank you, Moses. Grab this real quick. All right. Can everyone, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Perfect. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, like was said, my name is Scott Mills. I'm our account executive here at Visible, and we are very excited about how this partnership uh, with V Technologies and uh, the capabilities of their Starship platform. So, I'm here to discuss uh, the USPS rates and kind of give you um, the benefits of adding USPS to your uh, carriers. So. To start off, um, we're going to focus here, as you see there at the bottom, on priority mail versus competition and kind of give you an example of that moving forward. So as we know, 2018 is here and uh, everyone's rates have increased a little bit. Um, we see that UPS and FedEx, that they've uh, gone up from 732 on their net minimum to 757. Um, and so the example that I'm going to give, just to give you a real world example, is um, a one pound item going to zone one residential. So you see that net min, which is at 757, and most people just see that number and they go from there. But what they aren't aware of or sometimes overlook are the surcharges affiliated with that shipment. So uh, because this one's going to residential, we see a residential fee tacked on at 360, and then there's always a fuel charge, a surcharge of uh, 5%. So in this case, it was 56 cents. So the actual spend for that shipment was 1173, not the initial 757, and that also doesn't include uh, any um, area surcharges. So, as you see with a DAS and EDAS, if they would have gone with DAS instead of that 1173, it would have been 1523. And if it's an extended one, meaning a zip code further out from their regular areas, it would be 1618. 
and as you can see, you know, from that 757, that's a huge difference from 757 to let's say EDAS at 1618. Whereas with the Postal Service, USPS, their commercial base starts at 655 and there are no additional surcharges there. Um, but these uh, residential fee and fuel charge uh, aren't the only surcharges there are. So here's a list of surcharges that can be added uh, to shipments going UPS or FedEx. Um, I want you to look over to that, that left side first. So the surcharges for 2018 have all increased um, at an average of 4.9%. And uh, so if you look over at the chart itself, you'll see that column with 2017 and then seeing right next to it that 2018 rate. So just looking at it, you know, the over the maximum limit, um, if it extends past 150 pounds and, you know, the, the length uh, limits of FedEx and UPS, you're actually getting hit with an additional surcharge. In 2017, it was $150 in addition. Now in 2018, that's risen to $500, which is a 233% increase. Um, if they have any additional handling, instead of the 1085 that it was in 2017, it's now $19 here in 2018. And as you continue down the list, you can kind of see the differences in the increases um, that have happened between 2017 and 2018. And so really the true spend for parcel when it comes to FedEx and UPS isn't always the net minimum, but it's these surcharges that can really spike the price. And so you need to make sure as a company that you're aware of these charges and then you truly know what you're spending on, a, on each shipment. So uh, talking about where USPS wins. So the ideal package size are smaller sizes under 20 pounds that are going to zones one through four. If it's going to zones five through eight, there's still a chance, just needs to be a lighter weight and we'll kind of discuss that later on. Uh, but these are ideal for USPS packages. So if you're a company that's shipping smaller items, definitely you need to take a look at USPS as an option. Um, how to calculate it. So you take the length times width times height and you divide it by uh, your dim divider. And that will kind of give you a, an idea of the weight of your uh, um, package. And then also an additional discount that's provided through uh, USPS is cubic. So to figure out that, you just do your length times width times height and you divide it by 1728. And if that calculation comes under 0.5, then your package qualifies for cubic pricing, which is at a lower price than traditional USPS. Um, which is just more savings. So let's take a look at one of the rate charts. So um, on the left side, you're seeing a priority mail commercial based uh, USPS rate card. And on the right side, you're seeing a UPS ground commercial at a 10% discount with uh, fuel included. And as you can see, looking at that top left corner of each, if you've got a one pound a a parcel going to zone one or two, you're looking at 655. But on the UPS side, you're looking at 795. And that doesn't include any additional surcharges beyond uh, fuel. So as you can see, USPS on priority mail already is saving money of more than a dollar, but that doesn't include those additional surcharges that could be hitting packages. So the savings can get even larger. And as you see in the yellow, um, that's the area where in this case, um, USPS wins over UPS. Um, so you can see that there's great savings uh, going through the postal service rather than other carriers for smaller packages going to smaller zones. Um, for visible, this is our new blue rate card for 2018. And we've compared it um, with the national carrier at 20% off their published rate and a 25% off their home delivery. So that, uh, taking into account that those additional surcharges. Um, as you can see at the top there, going to zone one, um, to, or going, sorry, going to zone two at a one pound uh, parcel, you're actually getting a price of 635, which previously you saw was 655 through the postal service. So our rate, uh, rate cards are, are cheaper. Um, and then looking at the national carrier, even with their 20% off the public straight and their 25% off home delivery, they're looking at 894. So you can see that that's a drastic difference in price. And if you have a large volume, you're definitely seeing huge savings comparing uh, comparing our new blue to um, traditional carrier rates. 
And then also one other thing we wanted to point out is um, we're also uh, excited about our 8 to 50% discount that we're able to provide on international shipments. So as long as um, we, you know, are able to qualify you for that based on your volumes and margins, then, you know, that's additional savings that you can uh, look into. And lastly, one thing that we uh, are offering to uh, V Technologies customers is a ship, uh, shipment analysis. So basically what we do is we take your FedEx or US or UPS uh, billing file and we bring it into our tool and it breaks it down for you. So basically we're able to show you your base charges, every surcharge that's hitting each of your shipments, and also see you know, what type of class uh, shipments you're sending. And we can break that down, show you everything that your bill is actually, uh, that your billing bill actually consists of. And then we can propose where USPS um, will provide you savings. And that's done in two ways through a pie chart where we can actually show you if you move 20% of your packages to USPS, then we show you the actual savings that you would occur. And I've seen savings in um, the thousands for one week. I've seen it up in $60,000 in one week. So depending on your volume, there can be huge savings when it comes to USPS. Now, normally uh, we ask that customers, um, for them to qualify for this shipping analysis to uh, ship 200 to 300 parcels a day or to have 500K a year in parcel spend. But um, because we're excited about this partnership and, and we see a lot of value in V Technologies, we're offering this to any customer who is on the line today. Um, so that if, if you're interested, please reach out to Simon um, and he'll be able to connect us and we'll be able to get that billing file from you. Um, we even have instructions on how to do that. And then we'll be able to run that analysis and show you where USPS would fit uh, in your current portfolio. So thank you for your time. And I will turn the time back over to Moses. All right. Thank you, Scott, for that. Alrighty, so today I'm going to briefly walk you through a demo here with uh, Macola ES uh, in Starship. So for the Macola progression users or the Macola 10 uh, users, uh, the process that you'll see today with Macola ES is almost identical to the workflow process uh, with your version as well. So keep that in mind. Alright, so as I mentioned, Starship has the ability to process uh, your small parcel orders uh, with say UPS, FedEx, or uh, USPS. Uh, but one of the key features with Starship is the ability to process uh, your LTL and international documentation as well. So therefore, um, today in this example, I'm going to take you through an LTL shipment um, that is also gonna be shipping international. All right. So here uh, in this order entry view, I have a simple uh, order here with two line items down below. And in the order header, in the ship via field, I have a map to Old Dominion here. And let me just show you in the shipping address, we're actually going to ship this to Canada here. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And let me bring up Starship. So here is Starship's user interface. Um, so here is the uh, single application multi-mode. And so to pull in that order from Macola, I can do so in a few ways here. So if the order is scannable, I can scan that uh, barcode uh, provided on that order and it will populate here in this input field. Secondly, I can click on the magnifying glass here and this will open up a list of open orders inside of Macola. And this will also allow me to select multiple orders if I needed to batch process or uh, merge related orders. Or lastly and simply, I can go ahead and enter in that document number into that uh, order input field there. So in this top left quadrant that I'm highlighting here with my mouse, Starship is going to pull over that uh, order header information from Macola. So if you notice, the transportation field, uh, which was matched to that ship via field, uh, brought over Old Dominion. 
and also brought over the uh, billing information attached that I had preset inside of Starship. The sender information came over as well, and also the recipient uh, is also updated, which is coming from that ship to uh, information field inside of that order. All right, so jumping down to the packaging view here, I'm actually going to expand all. So here in this example, um, I have uh, brought over those two limes on that Macola order and auto packaged inside of Starship. Uh, so currently this scenario that you're seeing now is preset inside of Starship, uh, but with the WMS systems uh, such as exact WMS, um, Starship will automatically populate uh, that packaging scenario from those systems into um, this view here uh, for your viewing. But here in the packaging view, I can add uh, certain pallets, I can add certain boxes, I can even drag and drop line items uh, into different boxes as well. And so just for this example, as you can see, I have two uh, custom boxes all placed on one custom pallet. All right, so if I click on this line item here, if you notice up top, the line item tab opens up. So inside of Starship, we try to pull as much information uh, as possible from that Macola order regarding these specific line items and the detail. Um, so however, if you don't populate your line item information inside of Macola, or say if you have a separate table um, that holds specific information, um, you can take advantage of our SQL extension um, which will allow you to write certain queries uh, to pull and also, if you needed to, write back um, specific information from Starship as well. But also, Starship has its own uh, database, uh, which allows you to enter and store uh, specific information. So uh, we brought over this line item uh, information number up top, the description, and also the unit value. But fields such as the unit weight here, the MMSC code and the class, and even for international documentation, the Schedule B and information uh, was all stored and populated uh, inside of Starship uh, and, and populated here, but that was already preset. So because this is an international order, uh, the international tab opens up up top. And so here's where you can enter in uh, broker information, uh, duties and tax in the account, and also to the right here, uh, you will see the commercial invoice uh, information as well if you need to add specific information uh, and adjust here. All right, so I'm going to click on the Rate Shop tab, and I'm also going to click Shop All here. So by clicking Shop All, Starship will go out and populate your negotiated rates uh, from the carriers that you have purchased inside of Starship. <clears throat> so as you can see, Starship has requested the rates directly from the carriers and populated that information here. So uh, one key feature in the rate shop is that you have the ability to view uh, both your small parcel and your LTL uh, carriers and rates all on one screen. So right now, uh, because this is an international order, uh, you're only going to see international services uh, from the carriers here as well. But here in this rate shop view, you can sort by uh, the carrier name, you can sort by delivery as well, or you can also sort by charges here. One unique thing here is if you've noticed that say a different carrier has a a, um, a lower charge or a faster delivery date, uh, it would just be as simple as clicking on that specific carrier and the transportation field will update with that uh, carrier and the service. And it also will print out the labels associated uh, to match up in with the uh, shipping labels and documentations for the carrier that you select inside this rate shop feature. All right, so to process and ship, I can do so by clicking F5, or I can go up to the process and ship button here. And so now Starship is going to update the sources, uh, sources meaning uh, your Macola source, or if you have that SQL extension that I mentioned earlier, you'll be able to pull information from there. 
And also we're going to print out your shipping labels and documentation. So let me go ahead and enlarge this for you all. And so our first is our commercial invoice that you're seeing now. Up top we have that head information, which is being pulled from Macola. We have the carrier of choice. We also have those two line items down below with the schedule B um, that was attached to each. And if I scroll down here uh, to view the additional information, such as the packages, the weights, and the invoice total as well. Right. And so behind that, um, here in this example, I'm actually using the Starship's bill of lading here. So don't mind the printer settings. I'm actually in a test environment. Um, but here again is the Starship bill of lading. Up top, we have that header information. And we also down below now have uh, the information associated to uh, that order. If you notice here, I had those two boxes um, all set to a, a specific same class. And so they all rolled up into one line item here. So one unique thing um, with carriers that we work with, such as Old Dominion, they actually provide a direct bill of lading. Let me go ahead and bring this over for you all. They actually provide a direct bill of lading that was emailed to me, uh, just so you have an example. Um, again, not all carriers that we work with provide this, um, but um, if it's a carrier that you're interested in and want to view, uh, we can definitely check that for you. But here is Old Dominion's uh, bill of lading here. Alrighty. And so right behind that, uh, we have our NAFTA certificate of origin here as well. With that header information up top being pulled from QuickBook, I'm um, from uh, Macola. And also down below, we have the description of goods as well with the tariff code. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. So now the labels and documentations have been completed. So let's go back into Macola here to show you the write back that occurred. I'm going to go into the order header and into the comment section here. So here we have written back uh, the common information for that specific order into that order inside of Macola. And so what you're seeing now is um, kind of the stock brand that we um, write back here. You can customize and edit what you want uh, the write back to look like. And to show the billing here, I'm going to make sense of this. I'm going to go into the billing and I'm going to the chip deck. And here is also that freight billing uh, written back as well. So inside of Starship, we have what we call freight rules. Um, so that allows you to set up certain uh, scenarios in terms of freight write back. Uh, so for example, if you want to add a specific shipping and handling fee, um, you can do so. Or if you want to, say, remove charges, if uh, the shipment is over in a specific amount, you can do so as well. So as I mentioned earlier, I um, just kind of want to reiterate, uh, if you want to see tracking information or shipping costs uh, written back into a specific place or a, a different table, um, you can take advantage of our SQL extension that we provide, again, uh, to achieve that and write the queries and, and uh, achieve that what you're looking for to have written back uh, where you need it to be written back. So that concludes uh, the shipping portion of Starship. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are two additional features that come with the Starship license. Uh, one is called eNotify and the other is Dashboard. Let me go ahead and bring that up for you quickly. So first is um, our Dashboard feature. Um, so again, Dashboard is a data analyzing tool uh, that grants your entire front office access to uh, shipping information, uh, different reports can be ran in here as well. Um, you also have access to your shipping history um, and also shipping stats as well. So I won't dive too deep into this dashboard view, uh, but I just want to show you what uh, the interface looks like and the, um, the uh, features that come with the dashboard. All right. And so secondly, um, uh, the second feature that comes along with the Starship license is our eNotify. 
And so eNotify allows you to customize email notifications and uh, replace the carrier's supplied email. So this also gives you ability to brand and include uh, important Macola reference fields if needed um, and add that onto the email um, and give you full access to what you want to your customer to see in terms of an email notification. So here I have just a brief example of what I uh, did here. So I put the company logo up top. I have the ship to date down below. I have the service. And also have here the tracking number, which is a direct link to the uh, carrier's interface or the carrier service website. And I even have what was on that specific order and in that packaging view. And so down below, I also included a uh, coupon here to attract more business and traffic to the website uh, and for the company. All right. So that concludes uh, my demo here and all that I have. So now I'm going to uh, just turn it back to Simon here briefly for any questions and answers here. All right. Well, thank you, Moses. Um, and uh, let's bear with me one second. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Moses, you can keep the screen for now. Um, so with, as Moses said, um, we do have some time, um, you know, for questions and answers. So if you do have a question um, that you'd like to ask to either Moses or to Scott regarding the post office, um, please, um, you know, feel free to type your question in. Um, we'll give you a few minutes here. Um, I'm also going to launch a poll. Um, if you can take a few minutes just to, you know, uh, respond to the poll, check off anything you might be interested that you might have seen um, on either presentation today um, so that we can follow up with you um, promptly over the next day or two um, to uh, uncover some of your uh, further needs um, and see if we need to um, do a private one-on-one -on -one demo as well. So let me go ahead and launch that, give you time to ask some questions. And I think I have a couple of questions here coming in already, so let me get to those as well. So I'm going to launch the poll. And if you can go ahead, um, you can uh, go ahead and respond to the poll. Um, the first question I have coming in, um, I believe it's for you, Moses, um, is I have custom flexibility fields in Nicola. Can I integrate this data? Yes. So um, to answer that question, the SQL extension that we offer um, pretty much allows um, you to grab those custom fields and, and that need to be imported into Starship or even on documentation that we print out. Um, yes. So in order to do so, you would need to take advantage of that SQL extension that we offer. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, next question coming in. Um, we use Crystal Reports in-house. Can I access the Starship tables? Yes, yes, you can. Um, so again, uh, that's where the SQL extension steps in. So if you need to grab information from Starship itself in terms of a recent order um, or just information that is inside of Starship, you can grab that uh, with the SQL extension um, and have access to that. Okay, great. And again, if you have a question, just feel free to, you know, um, Raise your hand here, type your question in, and we can uh, get to those answers. Um, another question coming in, um, what does the typ typical Starship implementation look like um, if I were to be interested? Yeah. Sure, so um, in terms of uh, Starship installation, uh, what normally happens, it kind of varies uh, depending on your needs and uh, what uh, is on your license. Um, so if you're looking for a, a, a specific time, um, I can't provide that to you without uh, the details of what exactly you need. Um, but um, if, if it's something you're interested in, please feel free to reach out and I can uh, give you a more uh, exact answer. Okay, great. So, so far we have about 33% of the people who responded to the poll. So I'll leave it up for another minute or so. If you can just take another moment and just check off as, um, you know, um, you know, which one you might be interested in here. 
Um, it will definitely be interested, and I, I apologize. I'm just realizing the poll doesn't allow you to choose more than one, um, so we'll follow up with you um, in regarding to see if you might be interested in other applications of the uh, platform as well. Um, one other question I do have here um, coming in, uh, can the forms and documents in Starship be customized? Yes. So the documentation um, and even the ones that you saw, we provide a template. Um, that allows you to go in and customize, uh, say if you want to add specific fields or remove certain looks, um, you can do so uh, with the Starship and the templates that we provide for you. Great. And <clears throat> another question here, um, is it required to fill out the package pallet information? Um, example, which items go into which boxes? Is that a requirement? No, it is not a requirement inside of Starship. Uh, just for demo purposes, I showed you uh, what you could do, um, but it's not a requirement. You can actually uh, say if you need to print out the entire shipment order instead of the detailed information, um, you can do so. So to answer the question, no, it's not required. Okay, great. Uh, another question coming in here, if we already have a contract in place with an LTL carrier uh, for rates, will this pull the rates in for that as well? Yes, so uh, for the rate shop feature, um, so V Technologies, we're not a 3PL, um, so we don't kind of adjust any rates that you see. The rates are being pulled uh, straight from the carrier's website. So the rates that you will see inside of Starship are your negotiated rates and your contract rates with those carriers. And I'm just going to add to that comment as well and um, just let us know which carriers you might have because we don't have direct integrations with all the carriers. Um, so based on the carriers you might have, as long as we do have a direct um, integration to the carrier, we can pull in those negotiated rates into Starship. All right, so I'll give another minute. If there's any additional questions, um, please let me know. Um, let me go ahead and close out the poll. So appreciate those who voted. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. <clears throat> All right, so there's no further questions at this time. So I would like to uh, thank everyone. Um, you know, thank you, Moses. Thank you, Scott, for uh, providing us the information today. Um, but if um, you do have any other questions, um, please reach out to uh, Moses. Um, we can funnel any questions to Scott as well um, from Visible regarding the post office. And if you are in, um, interested in doing a free analysis, as Scott mentioned, um, on your transportation spend, um, it is a great way to see where you might be able to take advantage of that as well. But I appreciate everyone, everyone's time today um, for spending it with us, and um, we look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you for joining.